Hey, it's Metacosis Perfect Nanus, continuing our playlist on bleeding and coagulation disorders. Today, we'll compare between immune thrombocytopenic purpura or ITP and thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura or TTP. By the way, on my channel, I have a playlist called Comparisons, where we compare between different medical conditions. It's one of the best way to memorize ever. As you know, bleeding and coagulation or hemostasis consists of four steps. Vasoconstriction, primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, and fibrinolysis. Who is the hero in vasoconstriction? The blood vessel. How about primary hemostasis? The freaking platelet. How about secondary hemostasis? The coagulation factors. And in fibrinolysis, it's Mr. TPA. Cool. Where's the problem in ITP or TTP? The problem here is in primary hemostasis. One of them is called immune thrombocytopenic purpura, so the platelet count is low. The other is called thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, so the platelet count is low. So both of them will have low platelet count. What's going to happen to the bleeding time when your platelet count is low? The bleeding time will be prolonged. What was the normal bleeding time between 4 to 7 minutes? What was the normal platelet count from 140,000 to 400,000 per microliter? Immune thrombocytopenia purpura. Immune. So where's the problem? It's an immunological issue. We have autoimmune antibodies, and these autoimmune antibodies are IgG, and they are attacking our crazy receptor called GP2B3A receptor. Without this receptor, platelets cannot aggregate. So primary hemostasis is toast and we will suffer from mucocutaneous or superficial bleeding. How about TTP? TTP actually the problem here is in Mr. Adam TS13. What's Adam TS13? Adam TS13 is a molecule that normally should divide your ugly, big, useless, harmful, von Willebrand factor multimers and convert them into benign, lovely, functional von Willebrand factor monomers. Okay. But when you lack the Adam TS13, you will be stuck with the von Willebrand factor multimers because now you cannot convert them into von Willebrand factor monomers. And when you are stuck with multimers, they will lead to thrombosis. Yeah. Speaking of thrombosis, you get plated microthrombi, which will lead to consumption of plated and thrombocytopenia. And while the red blood cells are trying to pass, thanks to the plated microthrombus here, the red blood cell will get absolutely sheared into schistocytes and they will get destroyed, called hemolysis. This is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia because it happens inside small blood vessels. So we have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. We have thrombocytopenia because all of the platelets have been consumed in this, this stupid platelet plug. We can have acute renal failure, although this is rare in TTP. We get fever and neurological symptoms, usually altered mental status. So what's the difference between ITP and TTP? Etiology is different. Here we have IgG antibodies against GP2B3A, which will inhibit platelet aggregation. How about TTP? We have a defect in the Adam TS13 enzyme. This defect could be a deficiency of the freaking enzyme. This is called inherited TTP. Or the amount of the enzyme could be fine, but we have an inhibitor to the enzyme, and this is called acquired TTP. Platelet count is low in both of them. Actually, the name has thrombocytopenia. No, duh. Bleeding time is high because the platelet count is low. When the platelet count is low, bleeding time will be prolonged. When the number is low, the function is low, so the bleeding time is high, is prolonged, it's abnormal. Schistocytes are absent in ITP, but present in TTP. That's a huge difference. LDH level in the serum is normal in ITP, but high in TTP. Haptoglobin is normal in ITP, but low in TTP because it has been consumed because of the hemolytic anemia. I can add another thing. How about Mr. Bilirubin? Bilirubin level in the plasma will be normal in case of ITP, but it would be high in case of TTP because of the hemolytic anemia. Let's talk about PT and PTT. Since the problem is in primary hemostasis only, while secondary hemostasis is absolutely fine, PT and PTT will be normal in either case. How do we manage ITP? No symptoms, no treatment. You can give steroids, IVIG, platelet transfusion, IV steroids and IVIG, rituximab, el thrombobagan, romiplostim. These are platelet boosters. They are agonists to Mr. TPO. TPO receptor agonist or TPO RA. Splenectomy is last resort because it's a major immune organ. If you decide to move the spleen, don't forget to vaccinate and give antibiotics. Let's manage TTP. TTP is a freaking emergency, so you need to urgently and quickly do plasmapheresis, plasma exchange with fresh frozen plasma and cryosupernatant, not cryoprecipitate, because cryoprecipitate actually has von Willebrand factor, which will lead to more platelet microthrombi, which will make matters worse. 
do not give platelets, do not give antibiotics. I have a premium course about antibiotics and another course about anti-cancer pharmacology on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. These are doozy. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website here to get my antibiotics course and my anti-cancer pharmacology course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionaires where medicine makes perfect sense. I love you.